I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes about the difference in expectations and the difference in time required in taking a course at the high school level versus the college or university level in the United States. In the typical high school course in one year, you will meet for approximately 180 days for an hour a day in that course. Let's call it United States history. 180 hours of your time in the classroom. When you go to college or university, you cover approximately the same amount of material in one semester. Now a semester is 15 weeks of classes, meeting say twice a week for an hour and a half. That's three hours a week for 15 weeks. So at the college level, instead of 180 classroom hours, you're gonna have 45 hours, 15 weeks at three hours each. The difference between the high school and the college approach is 135 hours of classroom time that does not exist at the college or university level. Where do you make up that 135 hours? As a student, you make it up on your own, doing your studies outside of the classroom, 135 hours over 15 weeks, which is an average of nine hours per week per three hour class. Nine hours a week, okay? Think about that. Given the fact that there is not enough time in the term to cover everything in the classroom for a three credit hour course, you've got to ask yourself, as does every college professor, What's the best use of my classroom time? I cannot teach the entire course in the classroom. I have to rely on my students to study outside of the classroom and then come to the classroom and use it to its best advantage. In my opinion, the best use of the classroom is to resolve the questions you may have run across, to clarify any issues that you have over the material you've been studying and to perfect your understanding of that material by coming to the classroom and having a conversation. A conversation, not a lecture. In my case, many of my course topics are covered on video. That's like being in a lecture in the classroom. But when you come to the classroom, to me, that time is best spent if you, the student, have already confronted these topics, studied them, worked on problems, and you now have a basic understanding and some questions about anything that isn't clear about how to solve a particular calculation. What this means is you have to arrive at class prepared. All the materials are furnished to you. In my case, there are videos to watch, articles to read, a textbook to read, practice quizzes to, to attempt. There's a difference between being ignorant and ignoring what's going on. Ignorance is a passive state where something happened and you just weren't aware of it. Passive. To ignore something, like your assignment, is an active state of being. You are actively ignoring, avoiding, doing the necessary study. Ignorance we can overcome, we can learn, we can expose, we can show, tell, explain. But if you are going to ignore your assignments and not do them adequately to come to class, there's nothing I can do about that to resolve your problem. As a further comparison of education at the high school level versus the college level, I want to use a, a tool called Bloom's Taxonomy. This is a ranking of different levels of learning objectives or understanding that you might move through as you learn a topic more in depth and more broadly. 
There are six levels in Bloom's taxonomy. I want to take you through the six of them fairly quickly. But I want you to keep in the back of your mind that in the American public educational system, we're faced with crowded classrooms, teachers who have more administrative tasks to do every year, disciplinary problems to deal with, and sometimes too much or too little parental involvement. And so in the public school classroom, it is difficult at best for a teacher to move through a topic and explain it all the way to the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Too often, that topic of the coverage covers only the first two levels, perhaps the third. And then a student walks out of the, the high school classroom thinking, hey, I got an A, I really know this stuff. And the answer is, no, probably not. There's probably a lot more of it for you to learn that we will expect you to learn at the college level. Too often in public school, teachers have to rely on memorization and recitation, and spitting back facts, and occasionally working on a problem, applying the knowledge. But there are further levels of understanding than that, and we try to approach those at the college level. It's a different set of levels. It's a different set of study skills. There are six levels to Bloom's taxonomy, starting at the bottom. The simple act of remembering, recalling, and reciting. As you become better acquainted, more comfortable with, more complete in your understanding of a topic, you'll progress up through those levels. Level two, understand. Level three, apply. If we stop just there at the first three levels, that's most of what most of us get as we work our way through high school. If we are in some more advanced courses, or we are the lucky beneficiaries of some inspiring teachers who have enough time to spend on this, maybe we'll go a little further. But again, the problem is if you come out of high school with an A grade point average and you've never gone beyond the third level of Bloom's taxonomy, that doesn't mean you're ready to do A level work at the college or university level. There's more to it, and that's the point of this entire presentation. Again, very quickly to remind you, remembering, right? Bloom's level one, rote memorization, no thought required. Can you count by sixes? Up to 600, okay? That may take a little thought. Can you memorize the Pledge of Allegiance? Can you memorize a poem? Well, of course, with enough repetition, but do you really have any idea what they mean? The answer generally is no. Level two in Bloom's taxonomy, we use the term understanding. Can you translate or summarize something into your own words? Can you take a thought, a poem, an explanation, and say it your own way? More importantly, maybe a better judge, can you explain it to a friend to the point that they understand it? Every teacher in the world knows that it's not until you start trying to explain something to someone else that you really begin to get an understanding of it. So if you understand it and you can explain it, then we also have to ask, is it of any use to you? Do you know how to apply or use that knowledge? Hmm. Let's see. Bloom's level three. Applying the knowledge you have. I will tell you very quickly in many of the courses I teach, we just about start right here. I will explain how to use a financial calculator to you, or I will explain a particular economic model. And then I will ask you, how do you use that to find the answer to a particular problem or a particular situation. And even if you've memorized it and you understand it, it is still a further step to take that understanding and use it to solve a problem. 
usually if you get into this, you also begin to see how sometimes other aspects of this, this field of knowledge interact with one another. And it becomes even more useful, and you understand it and can apply it at higher levels. Bloom's level four is called an analyzing. Assuming you can take the information you have and apply it to solve problems, the next step is to be able to take that information and that understanding to take it apart and show the different pieces of it, how they fit together, and how this part leads to the next part, leads to the next part. This allows you with that, that pool of information or understanding or application to be able to identify when mistakes are made, sometimes to be able to identify better ways or quicker ways to do things. It helps you see how multiple factors may affect a particular application or solving of a problem. And a change in one factor may change a number of things about the problem you're trying to solve. Analyzing is being able to apply what you know, but in different situations with different complications. It is truly the creative use of the knowledge that you've learned how to apply. Bloom's level five, in my opinion, the most important one in terms of the college courses you're going to take if you're going to do well in those courses. We've moved beyond level four. We're up into evaluating different arguments, judging statements as true or false and why, forming an opinion or a position and defending it or attacking an opinion or position by another person, looking at opposing views and being able to see things from, from both perspectives. We spend a lot of time designing examinations to achieve this goal, to see if you know the topic well enough to evaluate and judge what is correct, what is wrong, and why. A multiple choice question, the best ones anyway, and certainly in economics, require you to evaluate four different answers, or five, and decide which one is the most accurate, which one shows the best understanding shows the, the appreciation of the consequences or costs of a, of a decision and the benefits. This is the level at which we take controversial topics and examine the opposing views. This is where your mind truly begins to expand. And you become able to hold opposing views in your mind at the same time without taking sides, just evaluating them objectively. This is college level learning. It doesn't come from simple memorization. Bloom's level six. We don't always get there in every course, but almost all of us that teach wish that we could. And in our best courses, our students reach this level. This is the level where You've not only learned to evaluate arguments around a topic, but you've, you've learned to develop maybe your own opinion, your own view, your own model to explain what's going on. You're able to create examples to help explain what you see happening. You're able to write or ask questions that help reveal what the meaning is of that knowledge. It's where you take the different parts of understanding put it together into an overall argument or synthesis. Maybe you even combined information and understanding from different fields into a whole new concept. This level of knowledge and understanding is exciting and it's filled with the joy of learning. It's when you well, for me, when I get a class that comes to this level, the tenor and the complexity and the level 
of our class discussions is just phenomenal because people are dealing with something where they know the sum of the parts. This is where you want to reach. And this is where I want to reach in my classes. And you can't get to level six without being very, very well grounded in levels one through five. This is Bloom's taxonomy. It is a great model for understanding what education is all about. Here's what I hope you conclude and infer or learn from these past few slides. Education at the college and university level is a different experience than it was at the high school level. It takes you engaging in the material at a much deeper and broader and more consistent level than you probably were asked to do before. If you're taking a three credit hour course, it means an average of nine hours a week out of class study to bring all that information into your understanding and up through the levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Warning, if you run a hybrid course where you don't attend class three hours a week, then your out of class requirement goes up considerably more. And above all, if you are in an online course where you are going to cover 180 classroom hours of instruction in 15 weeks, that's going to require an average of 12 hours per week for a three credit hour course. An online course is no easy thing. It is much, much more difficult than going to the classroom twice a week. It requires discipline and structure and organization. It requires maturity and it requires the determination to do the work you need to do when you need to do it. And with Bloom's taxonomy, taxonomy in the back of your mind, hopefully when you study from this point forward for a college level course, you find yourself studying at a different level. And it's a different experience. Thank you for your attention. Best of luck to you.